today we're going to paint a campfire scene. I'm painting in a world, but you can follow along in acrylic as well. The real-time version of this class is available on my website, so if you prefer a slower tutorial, you can go and take a look at that over there. So we'll start off by painting the background. That I've painted with a mixture of cerulean blue and Payne's grey. So I'm just blocking it in with nice flowing strokes. At the end of the day, I'm going to end off my strokes horizontally to make sure that it's a nice flat covering. Then I'm going to dry off that coating. To add the stars, I've taken some titanium white, thinned it down a lot. The more you thin the paint down to add your flicks, the larger the stars are. The thicker the paint, the smaller the stars are. So that's one way that you can control the amount of stars that you're getting. To add the shooting star, I've just taken a rigger brush, some more of the same paint, started at the head of the star, and then just faded it out towards the back. And that shows you he's moving from the right to the left. Now I'm going to start painting just the silhouette of the tree. So you're basically starting to paint from the back and you're moving your way forward. So for that back, I've taken Payne's Grey and I did add just a little bit of the sky color to it as well. And I'm using a really old hardware brush. And all I'm doing is just creating little clumps. And I'm using the photo as a guide and a reference to get me roughly the same, but I'm not copying it perfectly. Here at the bottom, I'm trying to fill it up more than what I am at the top, just to show that there's other bushes and stuff as well, not just trees. Where you're looking up, you're looking through individual tree branches and those clumps of leaves and so on. Here in the centerpiece, there's an individual tree that's just behind the fire. So I'm, I'm looking at the photograph and trying to roughly replicate the tree that I see so that later on when I come to add the branches and stuff I've got something distinct that I can work from. So I'm going to do this on both sides of the painting just to fill that whole background up. Then I'm also going to fill in the ground. And the ground I'm filling in with the same color and I'm in the end of the day, also just going to flatten that paint out using horizontal strokes. Now I'm adding some branches into the trees. So with the branches, I'm making sure to get some individual little branch ends. They don't have any leaves or anything on them, just sticking out because that always add lots of texture and so on. So what you don't see is there where the tent is supposed to be. I have blocked that off before we started painting using clear cover. So that's just like a plastic mask material that you can buy from your stationery store. So and as you can see, I've painted right over that mask. So he's just doing his job. So adding in these branches does take a while. So be patient while you add them. And as you add them, look for strategic places in between those gaps that you've left between the clumps of leaves so that when you put in your branches you can actually see them shining through in, in between the leaves. For the main trunks and stuff I've just used the same color but I've gone over to a soft full bit and I'm adding that in straight over the rest and I'm as you can see, I'm blocking it in nice and solid. I don't want any of the background color shining through in these areas. And I'm being strategic as well. I'm, I'm looking to see where can I get most value out of adding these branches in. And then obviously I am using the, the photograph as a reference. Here you can see I'm adding in the the trunk and the branches, the main ones for this little central tree in the background behind the fire. Generally, I'll start with the end of the branch or the trunk where it's thinner 
because your, your soft filbert does give you a nice sharp edge and so that as you come down you tend to press harder and harder and then your branch automatically gets thicker. And there you saw me taking off the mask from the, the tent. And then I did dry off the background as well. So now to add the leaf effect, I did start off with a, a very low intense green. Just so that you can get some kind of a green color into the tree as well. And I'm using a soft round brush. Very gentle taps on each of those little clumps that we painted with a hardware brush. And I'm highlighting them on the sort of bottom from the center bottom down towards the fire side. And I've done that for the whole tree. Now I'm going to come back in with lighter but more fire colors. So if you look at the palette, you'll see I've mixed like an orangey brown. So I've literally taken orange and I've added some raw umber into it to get me an orangey brown. So now I'm highlighting those greens again all on the fire side. The area that's closest to the fire I'm highlighting. Now I'm starting off with the larger tree that's just above the tent. So for that I've gone over to a fine liner because here I want to paint it a little bit more specific and a bit more detail because it's, it's right in front so we need to add more detail into this tree. So you'll see that all the leaves at different areas on the branch will point in different directions. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm adding these little dabs and dashes in, in, in those directions that I see them the leaves are growing on each branch. And that just helps to show the direction of the tree. So closer to the fire, I am using the lighter version, which is just a little bit more orange, a little bit yellow ochre, and a, obviously more white into the mix. And then as I move towards the right hand side, which is further away from the fire, I'm gradually using the darker, darker, the browner mixes like we used on the, the distant trees. And that way you get that glowing effect where the tree is looking brighter towards the fire and darker away from the fire. So this bush right here by the tent is now illuminated by the light that's on in the tent. So I'm going to use a different photo for the tent. And that's a, it's a green and a blue tint that I'm using. So what I did was I took white and a little bit of cerulean blue. And I mixed those together. You can see there's the color that I'm using. So what I'm doing there is just the same technique as for the tree. But now I'm just using the, the tint highlight color. And I'm creating those little clumps. You'll find that your leaves and stuff grow in clumps because they, they come off the branch is going in one direction and then a branch is going in a different direction. So you'd have these little clumps of leaves coming off your plant. So I'm looking for those clumps and I'm somewhat replicating them. So the same as on the tree at the top, the light is dissipating towards the left hand side. So I'm gradually using more and more of those browns. So you can think of it as you're creating a shading using dots. Alrighty. So now I'm adding some branches in there. And that's just plain Payne's Grey. So I'm being strategic where I put them to make sure that they stand out from the background colors. And as I do, I'm just wiggling and squiggling to, to make them look natural. If you make them too straight, then they don't look realistic. Great. Now I'm going to use some of the fire color and I'm going to highlight that just on the fire side. And that gives them a nice 3D look to them. And as I highlight them, I'm not highlighting them in solid lines. You can see it's a bit of a, a dabs and dashes. And that just shows you that the branches themselves aren't smooth. They're a little bit rough and knotted. Alrighty. 
So now I've used that same highlight color and I'm adding in the trunk for the tree behind the tent and the branches. So this does now take time to add those branches. You can see I'm using a rigger brush. So I've added lots of medium into the paint. If you're working in acrylics, you should add lots of water. And as before, I'm, you'll see that I'm starting at the end of the branch and working towards the, the main branch or the trunk. So that your brush starts off with a nice sharp tip and gradually becomes broader and broader as you move closer towards the, the connecting trunk or branch. Then I'm highlighting this on the tent side because the tent is now also illuminating this tree and the branches. So I'm using that same cerulean and white mixture to highlight this all on the bottom side of these branches. And then I'm also adding in a few extra leaves using this color as well. Alrighty, so moving on to the large trunks on the right hand side. I'm using now that same color and I'm just using little dabs and dashes using a small fine liner. And I'm adding in just a texture onto the tree. More texture towards the fire side and less texture gradually towards the right hand side. And that shows you that the tree is rounded. Then I'm going for the lighter fire colors and I'm going to gradually start creating a bit more distinct textures inside those highlights that I've added now. So you can sort of say I'm highlighting the highlights, but I'm using the photograph as a reference to get those little nuts or the areas where there's a branch that's cut off or broken off and so on. And that just adds interest to the tree so that it's not just a boring, straight, flat, upright tree. It's got a bit of character to it. And then right at the end, I come back in with an even lighter version, just on the very right hand sides. So I'm looking at the, at the photograph quite carefully to see where are those little highlights. And I'm somewhat replicating that. And I'm going to do that for all the different branches and trunks on this right hand side. As I do it, what I'm looking out for is to add some of the branches and stuff that are going behind, for example, this big front trunk that you can see I'm working in behind now. That gives you depth and distance so that the one tree is in front of the other one. And that way you get a nice 3D effect. Fabulous. Let's move on to paint the fire. So I did add now more orange and more cadmium yellow into my fire colors that I used for the tree. And I'm using a, an old fine liner and just a very light amount of paint on the brush. And I'm just glazing that color in. So what I'm painting now is not the fire itself, but that glow from the fire. So I'm taking that glow a little bit further away than what I see the fire is. In other words, broader towards the top right, left, and even the bottom. You'll find that there's a, a glow even on the ground as well. They are putting it in over there at the, at the moment. Then I'm going gradually more and more orange towards where the fire is, so that that glow becomes more and more intense where the flames are. Great, so for the flames itself, you can see I'm using a different photograph. On the original photo, the flame was quite small and boring, so I've taken this other photograph and I'm using that as, a, as an inspiration for my fire. So for my fire, I'm adding little, just little dabs, almost think of it as little individual flames licking outwards from the center of the fire. So on the outside, you're going to have more loose individual little flames like this. And here in the center area, a lot more solid. So I'll build it up like this, gradually. These little random marks. So generally they, they're pointing upwards because your flames do go upwards. 
but each one's a little bit curled and looking a little bit different and so on. So then once you've got that main structure of the fire created, then I've taken neat cadmium yellow and added inside of that little individual flames that are licking. And then closer towards the base of the fire, I'm taking neat titanium white over everything and adding individual flame licks, I suppose you could call it. Because <laughs> what happens with a fire is here by the flame it's hottest and then it gets colder going out right so it starts off white then yellow then orange indicating that the flame is getting cooler and cooler all right and there you see me adding just a few dots and that's like when the fire pops then it shoots off those little little bits so these little dots that you're adding there don't overdo them but a few of them always just add that extra motion of the fire makes it look like it's moving then I like to take some Payne's Grey and just add a few little dabs and dashes to indicate some of the coals that are shining through in between the flames. Great, so for the figures, I've taken the dark bark color, a tiny, tiny amount on the brush. And now I'm going to just reference the photograph and just judge where I'm seeing those highlights. So what I'm doing is I'm using almost a glaze very very lightly and I'm just plotting out the shape of the figure so as I do I'm estimating the proportions the angles and the dimensions and so on just to get an idea of what the figure looks like once I'm happy with that then I'll go over to a more intense flame kind of color and I'll solidify that. Now you can sort of see the figure. To make sure there where the, the rest of the body is that's not illuminated, is not see-through, I've taken neat panes gray and I've just created the rest of the body so that we don't have the, the leaves and stuff <laughs> shining through the body. Like there you can see I'm solidifying it. Now you can see the full body. Alrighty, so now I'm going to just take brighter flame colors and start highlighting the areas closest to the fire. And that's going to help to give me more depth and dimension to this figure. The back of the left hand figure here is also illuminated by the tent. So you'll see the back of the body, I'm using that light blue tint color. And I'm just sketching in basically the silhouette of the back of the figure. So to try to get a few little ideas of wrinkles in the pants and so on. And yeah, I'm just continuing to brighten up the glow on the figure using some neat cadmium yellow. Fabulous, let's move on to the tent. So I've used that existing tent color because he's sort of the, the highlight color there where the lights are on. So I'm blocking in the blue with that. And as you can see from the photograph, the tent looks similar shape, but the inside bits are different to the original photograph that we've been working from up to this point. So I am, am having to just do my own thing and re-sketch out those shapes. As long as I can get it to look similar, I'm happy. Alrighty, so now I've added more cerulean blue into the mix. And I'm just creating that fading and shading effect on the tent, on the canvas. And then just to get a little bit of a wrinkly look on the canvas as well. I'm added a bit of Payne's Gray into the mix for a darker version. And I'll add it in like a line and then I'll fade that line out to the sides. And for the stitching I added even more Payne's Gray into the mix. I picked up the paint on the fine liner in a chisel point. So you pick up the paint on the one side of the brush and then you turn it 180 degrees and you pick up the paint again and that gives you a nice little chisel point. 
Alrighty, so I did go ahead and do the same with the green. So I just used some greens and paints grey. For the floor, the tent is casting a little bit of a glow onto the floor, so I used the green. And just a quick little glow, don't take it too far out, otherwise it won't look natural. Just a nice, gentle, subtle little glow. And that just adds an extra little lighting effect to that area. Alrighty, so for the ground effect, I've used a fine liner and just little dabs and dashes. Using the same flame colors again. Same as what we used in the trees. And just in a horizontal motion. More you by the fire and gradually less and less moving downwards and to the left and to the right. And that shows that the intensity of the light coming off the fire is quickly dissipating. Great. So that tree at the back, we couldn't really put in his branches in the beginning because we needed to glaze in that glow of the fire. So now I'm adding in those little individual branches. And as I get you to that glow of the fire, I'm just fading it out until it disappears into the color of the glow of the fire. Because you're using essentially the same color. Alrighty. So then I am just highlighting some of those branches now as well, just to give them some of the, the fire glow. So just look for what areas are closest to the fire and pointing towards the fire. And with that, our scene with the campers is done. So I hope you enjoyed that lesson. If you did, please like and subscribe. Then in the comments below, please let me know what other paintings you want me to paint. If you want to go and see my other tutorials on my website, I've left a link on the screen and in the description below. I've got hundreds more painting and drawing classes just like this one, but in real time waiting for you over there. So go and check that out. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.